an expat here living in Dubai with my French husband Laurent and my two daughters, Ayla who is just turned five and Iris who is two and a half. Before becoming a stay-at-home mum, I was an early years in primary school teacher and now I create content about motherhood, Montessori and homeschooling. So if that's content that interests you, then please subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of my future videos. In today's video, I'm gonna be sharing with you a new tour of our homeschool room. So without further ado, let's get into the video. So I'm going to take you on a little tour of our homeschool classroom. If you're new here on this channel, then you might not know that I used to have uh, our homeschool classroom inside our maids room. Um, we have a small sort of box room downstairs in Dubai, we call that the maids room. And that's where our homeschool classroom used to be. But now uh, we've just got so many resources and so many different interests going on at the same time. And because both of the girls now have work that they're working on, uh, we just didn't have the space inside that small room. So now we've expanded into our sort of living space, which was our playroom. So now our classroom and play space is sort of combined. And now that the girls are a bit older, um, a lot of their toys uh, have gone up into their bedroom and um, because we homeschool I quite like this idea because it sort of keeps our educational space and our sort of Montessori space and our uh, toys and things separate and it also it sort of gives the girls a bit of fresh air in terms of not just staring at the same four walls all day and um, so they can go upstairs into their bedroom and they can take out their toys and they can play and in this video, I'm also going to show you what we actually did with our homeschool, uh, our old homeschool classroom, what is in the maids room now and why we, another reason why we moved out of that space. And so let's go and I'll show you what's on our shelves. So this is the main corner of our classroom. Um, over here we have our language shelf, here we have roughly our math shelf and then on this main shelf here we've got um, a sort of mix between sort of sensorial activities, we've got um, some topic activities, sort of natural world um, activities and just sort of a mixture of everything really, everything else. Um, we don't really have the space to separate everything and um, give everything its own home, so that's how we've done it. So I'll start here with our language shelf. Um, on top here we have our Lakeshore sound tubs. Uh, don't get any ideas about how much we spent on these. We actually got these second hand back in the UK from Facebook Marketplace. Uh, these run, at, I think they're like $300 or something, something crazy like that. And I would never have gotten them at that price, but they are such a lifesaver. I have to say, like if if you do have the money these are so convenient and um, so i'll give you an example this is a and it has a mixture of long vowel and short vowel um, words inside there it has a list of what's in there and then the little items and they're so cute and it's it was so it just made life so much easier having these rather than trying to find things uh, for each sound and also it means that they can live there permanently on the shelf whenever the girls want to look at them, play with them. Um, whereas when I was doing it myself I had to put the things back because it was things that I would take from the kitchen or toys from their shelf and then I would have to put those things back. I could only leave them out maybe for a week um, before we needed them again. So this is great just having these. They're so convenient uh, like I say. Um, so I was so lucky. So if you're looking for something like this do check on like Facebook Marketplace and sort of secondhand um, places on eBay as well because you might be lucky and um, I was so lucky finding these. Then on the next shelf we have our reading shelf. I have a mixture of books here. These ones are free books that you can print from uh, The Good and the Beautiful which I love that uh, curriculum. It's such a um, such a fantastic free resource. Uh, it's just amazing that you can print um, all the activities and things like that for language and maths um, for free. 
and so these are really great phonic stories. This one is from another free resource called Hubbard's Cupboard. Um, so we like to print these books. It just keeps her, it just keeps Isla's bookshelf fresh, and that I can print new ones because I can't afford to keep buying new books. Um, we follow the Biff Chip and Kipper books. Um, I really love this. This is what I used when I was little to learn to read um, and the books are really nice. They're wholesome as well. Uh, it's just about uh, a family and their sort of day-to-day -day life. Um, so I really like those ones. I also have the primary phonics books. Uh, these are really great phonic books. Uh, the only downside to them is the pictures are not very colourful. Well, they don't have any colour actually, um, but the the books are really well written. And then I have, uh, again, Oxford Reading Tree. I've got the Songbirds books. Um, these ones are written by Julia Donaldson, who did the Gruffalo. And these ones are really nice because the illustrations are fab and the stories are interesting. Uh, because sometimes when it's just like, uh, a cat, uh, <laughs> you know, it's not very interesting. Um, it's hard to make the illustrations interesting. Sorry, that's what I'm trying to say. Um, but the stories are really great, uh, the songbirds ones, and you get multiple stories within one book. Then over here, uh, you can buy this one from Amazon. Uh, this is a CVC uh, activity. Isla's sort of done with this now because she can read CVC words with no problem. Uh, but I'm keeping this on the shelf because Iris is starting to take an interest in letters and sounds. And so uh, rather than just putting everything away, I'm just going to keep it here on the shelf. Um, and Isla really loves when Iris takes something out that she can do to show her how. Um, and then it's got the accompanying uh, little flashcards um, of words that you can make with them. Then over here, I've got my sandpaper letters. Um, we're going to be getting uh, we're getting ready to start this with Iris. Uh, although she's only two and a half, um, I feel like um, she's picking up things a lot quicker because she's got an older sibling um, who's already reading and writing now. So um, we're going to start this uh, probably after Christmas. But don't quote me on that. I might start before, but let's see. And then uh, we've got our CVC flashcards. Uh, Iris really enjoys these, actually. So what I do is I just segment the word. For example, b a s, and then Iris will tell me bus, and then we can check if she got the picture. And um, so um, Iris is already segmenting and blending orally. Um, she obviously doesn't know the sounds yet, but it's a really great activity just to get used to, to segmenting and blending words. Down here we have our um, Montessori work. Um, I got these from, um, it's the 3 to 6 homeschool Montessori curriculum. Oh gosh, I'm so sorry, I can't remember what it was called. I'll have a look. Um, <clears throat> but you can get stuff like this so easily everywhere because um, although this is Montessori, really the only thing that makes it Montessori is the colour coding. Um, these are all just normal phonics activities and, and words that your child would learn even without Montessori. Um, so for example, the pink, um, the pink set is like CVC words. Um, so these are just a list of words and then there's some matching activities and I've just stuck an envelope on the back to, so they don't lose the cards for each game. And then here, uh, briefly before the summer, I introduced the concept of the magic E, and Isla's really getting into that now, uh, when we do reading, if there is a word with the magic E that turns the short uh, vowel sound into a long vowel sound, um, so she's really enjoying that just now. And then over here, I have a little bingo game, and this is for, um, sort of, uh, I would say, the blue... Uh, well, mind you, it's got like vowel digraphs as well, so a little bit more difficult words uh, in this one. And we play this actually as a group, and uh, Iris plays as well, even though she can't read the words. Isla has to read the words for her, and then Iris has to find the correct picture. Um, so it's really great, a lot of these phonics activities that the girls can actually play together. Another one that the girls play together is this activity. I think I got this from Teachers Pay Teachers um, for free, and it's a rainbow activity, rainbow matching. 
Um, so for example, Isla reads the word jam and then Iris has to find the correct picture and then they match the rainbows together. Um, so this is really great. Another one that we can do segmenting and blending orally. Um, another way I'll play if Isla doesn't want to play is I will read j a m and Iris will say jam and then she'll find the picture. Um, so it's really great. You can start even with your littlest um, playing these sort of phonics games before they're reading. Then down here um, we have our large uh, movable alphabet. Um, the only downside to this, I made a big mistake, which was I only got the lowercase letters for this um, instead of getting the uppercase as well. I didn't realise that it was an either or. Um, I don't really have space to have an uppercase as well, but it's really annoying when we come to write sentences. Uh, when we're coming to, to form sentences because we don't have capital letters, it's a bit annoying. However, um, something maybe I can save up for next summer. And this is another great one. We absolutely love this in our house and it's super cheap. And I think from Amazon you can find these. It's the three letter word flashcards. And it's really great for blending and segmenting words. Um, so for example, just open this up. Um, so for example, I've got b a g b a g bag and then um, they can turn it over and see what it is. And again, this is another activity that I can do with Iris um, just orally. I will, uh, I will sound it out and then she will blend it together and tell me what the word is, um, which is really great practice for later. I'll just put that there. And then over here we have our dice. Um, I, Isla doesn't really use these anymore, but uh, we'll be getting ready for Iris to start using these now. So basically the idea is for making CVC words. Um, we can roll the dice. We've got er, roll the dice again, i, and then g, er, ig, rig. And then uh, the girls can tell me if it's a real word or a silly word. Can they use it in a sentence? Um, sometimes you get silly words like rrr. Is that a real word or a silly word? And uh, it's really, really great just for vocabulary as well. It's a great game. I have another movable alphabet. This is a magnetic one that I got from uh, Amazon. It's Bright Max classroom magnet magnetic letters this is also a really great one the only difference is that the colors are different so in this one the consonants are blue and the vowels are red whereas in the Montessori one the vowels are blue and the consonants are red however um, it's still a really great resource and it has capital letters which helps then over here we've got some sort of any sort of whiteboard uh, marker activities. I really love this pretty uh, handwriting book, and it's precursive. You can see Iris has been in here <laughs> uh, playing with this. Um, so it's precursive, and that's what I use. I, I use Danelian handwriting, where um, we're not joining, so we're not doing cursive, and it's not strictly print but it's got the adjoining flick ready to do cursive later. Um, I have taught cursive and I've taught print in the past um, and I've taught Danelian and I just find Danelian uh, is the easiest for children, especially if they've not got very strong uh, pincer grip uh, and strong fine motor skills. This is the easiest way to learn because uh, if they're expected to write cursive later, at least they already have the flick ready to join to the next letter. Um, cursive, I have found, is a hit or miss with children. Um, if they um, just have that natural ability, um, I find that it's you know it can be easy for them but some children really struggle with cursive. So, and you don't know, you know, what, what child you're going to have, if you're gonna have a child who finds it easy or not. And then here I just have random activities that uh, I've printed out. And um, this one is from Twinkle. Um, I subscribe to Twinkle, I highly recommend it. It's such a great resource. And um, so this one is just reading the words and then matching the pictures. Um, another one, this one's an easier one, just CVC words. Um, another one is uh, number handwriting. 
a number formation. So you can, I love these little pockets because you can just put whatever you want inside and then you can just change it out like whenever you whenever you want, whenever you're done with it um, and you don't have to keep printing stuff. And then over here we have our math shelf, although the top isn't strictly maths. I have maths work here that we haven't started yet, but I'm getting ready to introduce. Um, I've got the multiplication and division boards. I have the hundreds boards. Um, I don't think Isla's got the patience yet to delve into this one yet. And I have the stamp game, the Montessori stamp game as well. And I have my spare uh, beads as well. And then over here, I've got my uh, the microscope. Uh, the girls love using this, but we don't have very many slides, but I got them a bunch for Christmas. So look forward to using that. Then we've got our flower sample here. <laughs> um, we got this from, I think this was Learning Resources as well, um, a little foam flower. Uh, we have an experiment here, but it's, um, it's a dolomite rock crystals that we're trying to form with vinegar. Uh, we'll see how that goes. I've got my classroom clock and the child's clock. And um, we have our globe, our light up globe. And of course, our beloved Yoto, the girl's absolute favorite. Then on the next shelf, we have um, some counters and wooden numbers. I think I got this from Amazon. And um, we're working on whole and part to form number bonds. So different ways of making five, different ways to make six. And then we have some simple addition uh, counting clip cards. If I have one bead and then two beads, how many beads do I have all together? And then uh, the clips seem to be missing, but um, <clears throat> that's the idea of this game. I think this was Teachers Pay Teachers uh, for free. I always go on there and look for free Montessori resources whenever I can. Then over here, I have this really great resource. This is by Ecole de Crevette and it's basically the number houses and I've just painted them really roughly um, <clears throat> the colors of the beads and so the idea if you if you follow me on Instagram you'll have seen this this work um, in action with Isla uh, so she lays them all out all of the houses with the accompanying bead um, I had to make a zero, a one, and a two. They actually are not on the website. I had to make them myself. It just starts from three, three to 10. And then the, um, the addition equations. And then, um, so basically Isla will do two plus four. She can use the Montessori beads to figure it out. And then she has to place the window at the correct house. And we really love this game. She really enjoys it. Um, just a disclaimer, she really enjoys it because I make voices for all of the houses. <laughs> um, so zero is like a little baby and she speaks to number 10 who's like uh, like an old man, an old grumpy man. So <laughs> we, we have like a storyline going with these and Isla just loves it. So um, that's probably why she's really into it. And over here I have our bead stand. We, ha we don't really use this uh, just yet. Um, we did start uh, with introducing hundreds and thousands before the summer, um, but we're just going back to go over addition and subtraction first before we continue. I feel like over the summer they just forget everything and uh, it's just good to start from the beginning um, and just move quickly. And then we've got our Montessori hanging beads here. So for example, there's the one bead and it hangs here at the number one. Uh, all the way to 20 and this is a great resource as well and uh, Iris enjoys just trying to hook the numbers hook the beads onto the numbers um, I also have this Collins addition and subtraction we haven't started this yet um, but I just got this as a little resource for if we're traveling um, we're going away for this weekend so this will be something that we can take with us just to keep practicing then down here, um, I've got the um, 
the gold materials. So we've got our thousands blocks and we have all of our um, numbers for units, tens, hundreds and thousands. We have our um, sandpaper numbers and we have our uh, beads. Uh, we also have the snake game. I think I got this from Teachers Pay Teachers. I might have had to pay for this, but it wasn't very much and totally worth it. Um, if you're not familiar with the snake game, I'm happy to explain. But essentially, you're exchanging units for tens. Um, and uh, it's a really, really great game. And it's got the um, answers on the back as well, which is really important in Montessori that your child can self-check. And then we have our teen boards here as well. Um, so yeah, so that's everything on our math shelf. Then coming up here, we've got our big shelf here with everything else on it. Um, so at the top here is my printer. My laptop is upstairs. And then here we have all of our non-fiction books. Um, so you'd be thinking, oh, it's quite high on the shelf, but we actually have a, a little stool. So Isla can get up there, no problem. And books, because books are her absolute favorite, she actually makes the effort to go up there and get them down. It's not like they get ignored because they're up high. Um, I knew that she would happily get these down because she loves books. So what do I have? We've got the everything I need to know uh, for school books. So in this, you get like a book on the human body. You get a book on volcanoes, just amazing, amazing set. This is actually really, really expensive, but I got these secondhand in Dubai. Um, I think they're quite expensive actually to buy these brand new. Then here we've got our magnetic set. I just didn't have another home for it. So <laughs> here it lives and we've got like a random magnifier. And then just random books about everything. Um, and then over here, we've got our religious books that we use on a daily basis. We've got our Bibles. We've got our Jesus Storybook Bible, our Indescribable 100 Devotions about God and Science, and our Everyday Graces um, for to work on good manners, uh, which I really love. It's super old fashioned, but that's what I like about it because um, I am super old fashioned. <laughs> And then we have our chapter books. I even have mine here in the front, as you can see, is Jane Austen. Um, so these are all like our Anne of Green Gables and Charlotte's Web and everything is back here. Um, we do read alouds every day. So um, these are not really accessible because they're so difficult to get the back. But because we do read alouds, we're already focusing on a bunch of chapter books at the moment. And these are all done. We've read them all. Then on the next shelf down, we randomly have our pegboards here. I don't know why, the girls must have been playing with it, put it in the wrong place. Um, we've got our um, colour boxes here, colour box two, and the big one is colour box three. We use these for specific activities. Um, the, I've got to be honest, the girls don't gravitate towards these, um, but if I put them out for a specific purpose, then they're ha like, they'll use them. Um, but it's not like a work that they tend to go to. Then over here we have our skeletons, uh, bits of bones and things that we find when we go out into the desert. I uh, would like to collect dead things because <laughs> um, they're really fascinating. And then here we've got our children's Atlas of the World book. And then here we've got our zoology puzzles. Uh, somebody was asking me in the comments if I was going to get these and I couldn't resist when I was back home. Uh, these are so great and I just need to make the extension activities because the puzzles themselves are too simple. Um, so I need to get around to doing that. And then over here we've got our rock and gem collection. Um, we've got quite a cool collection actually. We've got like shark's teeth and um, desert roses and we've got meteorites and all sorts really. Um, we've got the we like to collect these. They've got the National Geographic one and we've got the Klutz Steam Lab one. Um, and we also have over here, but Isla's working on this just now, is her rock collection. So she likes to sort them out based on different properties, um, whether it be size or color or shape. 
our texture and she likes to sort them. This is just our lunch box that we don't use anymore and so she likes to separate them. She's already busy on that this morning. Then on our next shelf we've got our uh, sensorial materials, we've got our geometric shapes and the matching cards. Iris likes to match the pictures with the shape and Isla is working on her vocabulary and looking at the different properties of each of the shapes. We've got our binomial and trinomial cube. Iris actually solved this the other day. I was super impressed and she asks for the trinomial one that I have to help her with. But really, she's pretty good at actually solving it. It's just putting the pieces into the box that she sort of struggles with because her hands are not big enough. Um, so she's really enjoying this actually. And Isla, when, when she sees her sister doing it, she wants to come and join in. Um, so that's a really great resource. We love our binomial trinomial cubes. Then down here we have our metal insets. Sorry, I didn't tidy up before uh, filming. So here is our metal insets. So, and then the pencils were on the side. It looked like super Instagrammable a minute ago. Um, so you take the pencils and then they can outline the shapes. And then we have the middle part of the shape as well for a different challenge. And this is a really great pre-writing um, activity. Um, Iris really enjoys it and Isla really enjoys this. Um, and if you look at our fridge, it's just covered in these little sheets of paper with coloured in shapes. Then over here we have our paper. Again, I didn't sort this out, but this is uh, colouring sheets on the top shelf. We have our coloured paper in the middle and then this is supposed to be just white paper down here uh, that the girls can help themselves to. Then we have stickers. Um, and down here that they can make pictures with. Then over here we've got our space work because that's what we've been looking at. Um, I think we're going to move on now. Um, I think the girls are a bit fed up with this topic now. Um, they want to learn about under the sea so I think that'll be our next topic. Um, so these are our three-part cards and then we've got all the books um, on the solar system and then we've got our little 3D model here, just papi mashi um, of each of the planets, and then a little um, exemplar of the order of the planets as well. And then over here, we've got our model volcanoes, um, because this was also part of our formation of the Earth topic that we've just uh, that we're just about done. And then we have our Melissa and Doug solar system puzzle. The girls love doing this. The only downside is that the perspective of the picture is from the moon. So the moon looks massive and then some of the big planets look tiny. I don't know if you can see that. So Earth looks huge, but then the other planets, because it's obviously based on perspective rather than just having the order of the planets, which I think would have been more helpful. However, then down here we've got practical life activities, we've got our goggles, we've got our allen key, hammer, uh, with the, this is a game called tap it, with little wooden pieces that you can hammer with tiny little nails. And um, the girls know about safety and keeping them off the carpet and such. And then here we've got our screwdriver and screws. The screwdriver's missing because we were learning about the ooh sound yesterday, so I needed these. And they're in my sound box. And then I've got some nuts and bolts in the back. Then here, Iris is really enjoying uh, colour matching just now. Uh, so I've got this really simple activity bought on Amazon, super cheap. Um, so it's got the coloured balls and then you get a little picture with divots to balance the balls on with each of the colours and so matching the colours. So she's enjoying that just now. We have our musical instruments. Um, I just keep the whole basket out because usually when we do music, the girls like to switch around the different instruments, uh, which I have no problem with. So um, you'll see in like some like Instagram Montessori uh, setups, it'll just be like one instrument or two instruments at most. Um, I have the whole lot because I'm a realist <laughs> and I know that the girls are just going to request everything anyway. So 
uh, they have everything there if they want it. And then next to that we have our song basket. These are just songs that I have collected over the years as a school teacher that I have printed and we can do uh, at circle time. And then we have also nursery rhyme books here as well. Then over here we have Iris's designated shelf, this tall one here. Um, so we have in here a box of wooden puzzles and again you'll see in a lot of Montessori setups just like one puzzle. Um, Iris in the space of half an hour she will do all of these like every single puzzle you see here. So what I do is if Isla is working on some schoolwork we will get the box of puzzles out and Iris will do each one in turn and pass them to me to put them back in the box. Uh, that's just what works for us. Then down here on the shelf we have some autumn themed threading. Uh, this was a gift from a friend so I don't know where these are from. Um, but it's so cute, these little beads. And Iris is really enjoying threading right now so that's an activity she's really enjoying and then over here we have um, Iris's name and then uh, these are the letters of her name and she has to stick them in order uh, she can do this uh, blindfolded now she's really good at this and oh hello Stormy hello darling and um, she can do this blindfolded now and then there's little pegs as well that she can stick. Hello, you wanting some attention? Um, yeah, so she can peg the letters at the top as well, which she's really good at. Um, she can do this very easily now. Um, she's not quite ready for writing, like copywriting, but I might. what I might do is I might just do an outline of her name and then she can try and go over the top of it. Um, otherwise, I'm not really sure what the next stage will be for her because I don't think she's ready yet for her surname. Um, but she's already mastered this, so I'll have to think about what to do next for her. This is colour box number one, but she it will be replaced with colour box number two that I showed you on the shelf over there. Um, because she already knows all the colours. And then down here, this is some work that uh, she's working on. Uh, which is some threading and um, she'll do this all day every day she absolutely loves it and her sister loves to come and join in too so I've introduced real needles um, they're big ones chunky ones like maybe used for darning um, but at least you know it's we're using the real thing now not uh, like plastic and um, so she's really enjoying doing that she feels very grown up sewing um, and then over here we um, have this little jar. I just popped a hole in there with a, a ribbon and she can practice cutting and then she can just pull some more out. We're almost done with that. And then I get these cutting strips. I print them off from Living Montessori Now that she can cut uh, into strips. Um, as you can see there's a whole pile here um, that she's been uh, working on. Then down here we have these peg boards with the pegs. Um, again, you'll see in a lot of Montessori setups, they'll have just like numbers one to five. Um, but Iris is quite competitive with her sister and she wants them all. Um, even though she's not familiar, like she's not completely familiar with all of the, the numerals, she can count. So although she can't maybe recognize that that's number five, uh, just yet she can count one two three four five one to one correspondence so that is why she has all the numbers one to ten then here is a lovely little puzzle I really adore this I got this I think this was Amazon it's by Scola and it's got the silhouettes of different kinds of birds and then the matching picture that you have to pop inside like that it's such a gorgeous uh, game um, this was one of Isla's favorites as well so you've got the silhouette of the swan and you've got to match them. So she really enjoys that one. Then on our next shelf, this is our Trofast from Ikea. We have over here our continent puzzles. So for each of the continents, we have uh, a puzzle. Uh, so it's North America, Europe. And then over here, we have our map of the world uh, puzzle. And then I just printed this off and framed it. Um, 
uh, a little map of the world. And then down here used to just be like random uh, toys like farm animals and things like that for small play and now what I've done is I've made them into continent trays so each of the continents have their own tray and then this one is going to be a life cycle one uh, but it's a big old mess just now I just got everything from the life cycle box and popped it in there just now but I need to sort them into like the bee life cycle the ladybird the cat the caterpillar uh, and do that um, but here just to give you a little look so that's Asia and then Africa, we have for Europe, although uh, Isla's playing with some of them just now. Um, that's Antarctica, she must be playing with some of them as well. Uh, North America, uh, South America, and Australia. Australia's a bit sad. We need a koala and we need a kangaroo, for sure. Um, that's on our wish list. Um, and then over to our play area. So this is our open-ended play area and down here we have our tinker tray, we have our Grimm's uh, rings, we have some spinning tops, our Grimm's rainbows and semicircles, we have these little gems, our Grimm's people uh, shells that we've collected from all over. Then down at the bottom we have these viewing discs with different colours. Um, these are a great favourite especially with iris and then we have our bells this is great these are great for teaching the notes um, if uh, your child is interested in music then we have these felt balls I can't remember where I got these from um, probably from Etsy I think um, and then we have our uh, hape car and the rest I think is Melissa and Doug uh, the tractor uh, this is uh, Goki, the, this is the Noah's Ark, and inside it's got all the pairs of animals inside. And then we've got the Melissa and Doug truck uh, with the digger and the fire engine. And then at the top we have our dressing frames. Just There's just no other space in our classroom to put them, so they're going to live here. Um, and these are really, really great. We've got the snappers, we've got the ties, the buttons, the buckles, the zipper, and the smaller buttons. And then uh, over here we've got our house and tree house. So if you watch my videos, I wasn't sure if I was giving this for Christmas or for birthday. Um, it, we decided to give it to Isla for her birthday. So we've got the Schleich. Um, I think it's Baya, Bayana, Bayara, something like that. They have a they have a selection of like mythical creatures. So we've got the fairies and the unicorns and things. And I got this beautiful house from Etsy in the UK, um, just gorgeous. It's not actually from the UK though. I think it came from uh, Romania, something like that. And then this is our plan toys house. Um, with all the bits and pieces. And then down here we've got the ticket mirror blocks um, and then we have just like random bits of chopped wood as well um, which is really great for open-ended play. We've got the other bits and pieces for the doll's house in here like a little swing and things like that. Over here we've got our um, magnet tiles these are actually Picasso tiles and they are just fantastic. The girls absolutely love these. They get used every day. Um, usually what they do is they'll create their own house with the magnet tiles and then bring all the accessories down onto the carpet. Then over here, it's just a basket of wooden dollies. Um, we just get these off of Amazon. They're quite inexpensive and I just got multiple sets so that there's no quarreling, um, especially when we have play dates. And then here we've got the Melissa and Doug wooden blocks as well. Uh, they, I have to say they don't get used quite as much now that we've got the magnet tiles. These are definitely more popular than the wooden ones. And then over here, this is our calendar. So we have the days of the week, the months, the date, the year. And then over here, um, I don't know what's supposed to be in there, but we just put anything that we're doing for 
um, sort of Bible study. So we're learning about the disciples. And then this was the Holy, uh, the Fruits of the Holy Spirit cards. You can get these off of Twinkle. They're really, really great. Then um, down here, we've got our markers and I have our sight words that we're working on, just a whole bunch of them. And then we have our famous Osborne famous paintings. We use these now for Artist of the Week. If you watch my videos, um, I do an Artist of the Week with the girls. So we'll look, take a deep dive at a famous artist and then we'll try and make our version of their artwork. So here's some examples um, on the door. Then we have our the one year devotions. We do this every day uh, just before we get started. And then here's just like random stuff. I mean, this is real life, like this is just a mess. Um, but we've got stuff for handwriting here. Um, and we have an acti a phonics activity for matching um, di diagraphs. And these are just different items and matching them to the correct diagraphs. And then here we've got our flashcards. So we did ooh for shrew. And um, these are the seasons as well. And then down here I just have my sound box. So when I introduce a new sound, a new phonic sound to the girls, I do it with puppets. So we were doing, uh, this is sloth for the th sound. Um, we've got a uh, raccoon for the oo sound, wh for whale, uh, and then if I don't have one, I'll make one. So this is uh, sh for shark. We've got ch for cheetah. This is actually a slipper <laughs> with eyes. So this is cheetah. Uh, this is a moth for the th sound. And then this is my, <laughs> my attempt at making a peacock. Uh, for the E sound and then there's uh, the other E sound so E for sheep and then uh, as I told you like there's like random things in here like spoon for the oo, uh, oo for blue, uh, oo for screwdriver I need to put these things back and igloo um, so this is how I introduce new sounds it's fun it's interactive and the children just love the puppets um, so yeah, so that's it for the classroom. Let me take you, um, let me take you over and see just a sort of overview of the classroom. And then uh, if you've watched my channel regularly, you can, you know that we've got the little um, kitchen in here. We've got a little crib for the babies and a pram. So um, Iris very often will just come over and play while Isla is doing like her w shelf work. Um, she'll just come and cook us something in the little kitchen. So that's a sort of overview of our classroom. Now I'm gonna show you what we did with our old classroom and what's been going on over there. So come with me. So this is our new bunny room. Uh, so this was our old classroom, this tiny little box room. Um, so it's kind of set up. Um, we're just uh, going to do a, a few more finishing touches in here before the bunnies arrive. I hope that video was helpful to you. Please let me know in the comments below if you have any suggestions or any ideas um, of how I can improve the space or if you want to share any details about your homeschool space. Otherwise, subscribe if you're new.